Hi folks, this is Donald. When I started urban sketching, and especially when I started watercolour, I wish I had known about the method I've just discovered. You can put the paint on first, then draw the ink lines over the top. It's so much easier, a lot more fun, and I really wanted to share it with you because I think it's a perfect way for beginners to get into sketching with watercolour. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the entire process in real time, and if you'd like, you can paint and sketch along with me. If you're a beginner or struggling with watercolour sketching, and trust me, I can entirely relate to that, I'd really encourage you to download the photo and have a go because honestly, this is art that anyone can do and you can achieve it with even the cheapest art materials. I'll talk about all the materials and techniques I'm using as I go along, so you might want to watch it through first before trying to follow along to get a better idea of what's ahead of you. I started with a very quick pencil sketch, no more than 60 seconds, just to roughly outline where the door handle, padlock and the main sections of the door will be. You won't see these pencil marks through the paint, so there's no need for accuracy. It's just to give a rough guideline, so a quick scribble will suffice. Then it's straight onto the painting. I chose to sketch this door mainly because I like the colours and all the textures and shades in the wood, and to capture all of that I'm using the wet in wet technique, which basically involves covering the page with a load of clean water, and then adding the watercolour onto that so that it bleeds and runs and creates all of these natural shapes and textures. It also means that no two sketches will be the same. The paint runs to its own rules and that means there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can just slosh the paint on and see what happens. Once I draw the ink lines over the top later on, you'll see that I use the natural shapes of the paint to dictate where I draw the lines, which is the opposite of how I would normally think about constructing a sketch. For a beginner, this is also a great subject because it's nice and flat, so you don't need to worry about perspective or complicated jargon or rules and you can't get lost trying to create a complicated 3D scene. I'm using Royal Talon's Van Gogh watercolours. I like these because they are really good quality and highly pigmented. They re-wet very easily, which isn't always the case. I know quite a few watercolour brands that tend to dry up and need a bit of effort to get the pigment back into its life again each time you use them. These ones stay slightly tacky, so they pick up the pigment pretty much as soon as you touch them with the wet brush. These paints are also vegan and many watercolour brands are not, which is something that caught me by surprise when I got into all of this. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan then you'll need to check things like watercolour paper, brushes and paints to see if they're made with animal products. I am a vegetarian so anything you see me using on this channel should be fine. I used very few colours in this sketch. I do have a habit of going overboard with colours when I paint, so I forced myself to keep it down to just three main colours and then I added a fourth at the end for a little embellishment. The first colour is turquoise blue, but I think in hindsight a turquoise green would have been a closer match. Not that it matters, I'm doing this for fun not to paint in photorealism, and that's always the attitude I would encourage you to take. For this wet and wet technique, you don't even need to do any colour mixing. The colours will mix and run into each other on the page, so just pick whatever colour you have in your paint set that looks the neatest match and go with that. You can be pretty wild and free when it comes to putting the paint down. I splashed it around fairly randomly to give a rustic, natural look like there is on the door. You can also vary the strength of the colour by using more or less water and varying the amount of paint on the brush. And while it's still wet, try reapplying more paint over an area if you want that part to be a little darker. Bear in mind that watercolour always dries lighter than it looks when it's wet, so don't be afraid to add more paint. The sketchbook I'm using is an A5 watercolour sketchbook from a small British company called Pink Pig. I like these because you can customise them to suit your own needs and they're fairly unique because they make your sketchbook in their UK workshop only after you've ordered it. You can choose the size, the colour of the cover and the type of paper that goes in it, which is pretty cool. I think this one cost me about £5 plus delivery, which seems absurdly cheap for a decent quality watercolour sketchbook. I mean, they're cheaper than a lot of the mass market sketchbooks, despite being customisable, which I can't really get my head around. If anything, you'd think they'd be more expensive. I went for the Amelier paper, which is a smooth watercolour paper and 270 GSM. This is the first time I've used an A5 size. Normally I go for bigger ones, but I really liked using this smaller one for a painting such as this. Any bigger, and I think the sections of the door would have looked a bit too spaced out. I've finished with the blue now, so you can see all the different levels of colour that are in there. Just from one colour you can get so many different shades. Just by varying up 
the amount of pigment that you're putting on the brush and the amount of water that's in your mix. And with the page still absolutely saturated, I move into the second colour, which is an oxide red. That's the closest colour I could find in the set that I have. It's a very rusty red colour that I thought looked quite good, but again, if you don't have that colour, just find the nearest colour that you have. And I love the way it looks when you get all the spiky edges and it starts to leak and blend into each other and you get all these unpredictable effects. And again, I'm splattering it around. I am looking at the picture, making reference to what I'm seeing, but you don't need to be exact. This is really your way to experiment and be loose. This is the one of the reasons that I think this is absolutely perfect for a beginner is that there isn't a right or wrong way to do this. You are not going to make a mistake. You're just splashing on colour roughly where you think it should go and watching it blend and merge and you get so many wild effects and every single sketch is going to be different. And you could say this looks a complete mess but at the same time you can also if you squint sort of see the door without any drawing on the top and remember we will be drawing over the top of this to pick out all the details and scruffy jaggy bits on the wood. then with a slightly drier brush dipped the brush straight into the paint and went in with a few more defined marks just to give a different type of texture And if you find that there's too much water pooling on the bottom of the page, which does happen when you're doing the wet and wet technique quite a lot, you can just dry your brush off on a paper towel and then dab it along and it will soak up any excess water that you have around the edges of the page. That's the watercolour finished for now. I'm going to come back and do some more paint later. So in between, I'm going to start drawing the inclines. Now, because I'm going to be coming back and putting more watercolour on top of this, I need to use a waterproof ink that isn't going to run. For this sketch I'm using an Oto graphic liner. This is actually the first time I've ever used this pen. It was just one I came across online because I spend far too much time reading about pens and looking up different types of pens. And I found this one which has got a metal tip and most of the time I would use a fine liner pen which has got a fibre tip. And the problem with those is that they do wear out quite quickly and sometimes they can struggle a little bit if you draw them over paint. So I had this pen in hand, I hadn't used it yet, so I thought I'm going to give this one a try and see how I get on with it. I quite liked the ink that was coming out, it was nice and dark, it was a good thick line, but because it's a watercolour paper the ink was very slightly feathering, but it wasn't too bad. Now normally when I'm constructing a sketch I would start with the foreground objects and work my way backwards but because this is a flat image there's not really an awful lot of that that you have to think about. The only things that you could count as the foreground are the padlock that is in front of the door and then the door handle is slightly in front of the plate behind the door handle and then after that you can pretty much draw everything in any sequence you like. Now I'm showing you this all in real time, but any little jumps that you see, that is simply sections where I've stopped to think about what I was going to do next, or bits where I was waiting for the paint to dry. Now as I suggested earlier, when I was going to do this sort of sketching previously, I would have been drawing all of these objects, like the door handle, 
in the padlock first and then when all of that was done I would have painted over the top of it. The problem with that is it really doesn't encourage a loose painting technique. What I find is that I end up always trying to paint inside the lines and it creates quite a rigid uninteresting sketch. So by trying it this way I found the painting section a lot more freeing and now I can draw over the top of it without having to think too much about getting it right or wrong because I'm being led by where the paint marks are. And I also like that things like the, the door handle, where the door handle is, that plate I would have made the colour perfectly fit inside that section but I like here how it bleeds out and it creates that nice variation in the textures. Now I'm drawing down the middle section of the door and that will be where the really dark shadow will go. And I do draw really quite slowly as you can see because I'm drawing in real time so hopefully you would be able to follow along if you're deciding to give this a go. You can usually just take your time with this, there's no rush whatsoever. If it takes you hours, days, who cares? And you can do this more than once if you feel like you've messed it up, you can always do it again. But I must emphasize that there's no right or wrong and especially if you're brand new to drawing and watercolor, it's inevitable you will make mistakes at some point. But try not to think of them as mistakes, just try to think of them as the character of your sketch and the more you practice the better you'll get. But I think if you try this way, if, it's, if watercolor is something that you're really, really interested in getting into. I think trying it this way really changes the way that you draw and it makes it much more freeing and you might find that that becomes your automatic way of sketching right from the beginning, in which case I would be very jealous because I would have wished I'd discovered this from the very start. So I'm just following my way around the sketch, drawing in the detail that I can see. So on the bottom right corner you can see that it's not a perfectly straight box. There is a rectangle but then there's some curvy lines. So I'm slowly going around just marking up where I can see such marks. And the good thing about this sort of a scene is it's quite symmetrical as well. So once you've figured out how to draw one section you can pretty much repeat the pattern, at least on the bottom two. The top two are really quite different, but the bottom two are virtually identical. And the reason I'm going to go back in with more paint later on is to paint in the shadows, and I didn't want those to bleed 
into the wet paint so I had to wait for those to dry and then at that point it would be easier to paint in the shadows once all the ink lines are in. So that's why I left that until after the ink drawing was done. In the top right corner you can see there's that very thick section in the middle that has a really dark deep shadow in it so I wanted to make sure that I got that in and I'll paint over the top of the blue to make sure that that turns into a deep shadow. So now onto these wonky, curly metal details on the door. The bottom right one looks quite normal and then the one above it is very wonky and wobbly. So I tried to capture that by do making it deliberately wonky. And that's something that I do a lot of anyway, is making objects seem really wonky and wobbly. That's just part of my natural drawing style. So that bit really appealed to me. I actually wish I'd drawn the bottom curly part like that as well. And then on the other section, there's not an awful lot, but there is a little gap through the wood. I'm just drawing that in now. And you'll notice at this stage, I'm not putting any of the cracks and wood grain detail in. That's the bit that will come next is adding in all the little textural details once the main outline is drawn. There are some old rusted bolts going across the middle of the door so they are the next thing the go in, but you don't have to do things in this order, you're free to do things in any order that you like. So that really is another reason why I think this is a great one for beginners to do because you can just practice your drawing and painting without having to think too much about it. My biggest advice for all of this is just try and enjoy it. If you're new to sketching, it's going to be quite a steep learning curve and you're going to have to learn a lot and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So the quicker you can get into the mindset of not caring about the end result or what other people will think, the far more enjoyment you're going to have with this. This isn't something that you have to show to anyone. Whether you're using watercolour paper or a little sketchbook, this can be something that you can just tuck away and never have to look at again. That's certainly something that I did when I started sketching. I just drew for myself. I never showed anyone. And in fact, until recently on a video, when I flicked through some of my earliest sketches and showed you how my sketching style developed, before then, I'd never actually shown anyone any of those. They were just for me, and then I packed them away, and I really thought they were terrible. But I quite enjoyed just sketching anyway, even though I didn't feel like I had any talent for it. 
it was an enjoyable way to pass the time so I just kept going and I feel like I've improved in, enormously since then but still there's so much to learn and don't feel like you ever stop learning. So now with the main outline done, I can start going in with a much lighter touch and drawing all the textural details. So I've just very slightly angled the pen more and then just not pressing as hard just to create the little lines and dots and textures and you can be very random with this. It doesn't have to be entirely accurate to what's there in reality and I'm using the marks that have been naturally made by the paint, the two different colours bleeding into each other, I'm using that to decide where I place the textural marks. And I love what the ink lines have done to the paint in the background, it makes it look like a dramatic sky almost. I just need me think that that would look really good as a wild and dramatic landscape with the wet and wet technique. It can produce some really dramatic results. And I'm quite keen to have a go at this kind of sketching with the paint first, the drawing second, for more landscape stuff. Because even though it's called urban sketching, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to paint just cityscapes or places in a town. It can be out in the countryside or on the coast. And that's something I want to get into more of. And I think going forward with my watercolour sketching, at least I want to try doing more of this wet and wet stuff with dramatic skies and see what turns out because I'm not trying to make fine art I'm just trying to enjoy it have fun and encourage others if I can to join in and have a go so lots and lots of textural detail the rust the grain on the wood and this is quite a change for me as well because usually if I'm using marker pens to do sketches I have a tendency to leave a lot of white space and quite clean bright white stark images and for this one I've gone lots of colour and lots of texture so it's really quite different for me and that's what I love about sketching is you don't you're not forced to stick to one thing you can vary it up you can try new things and that's what I love doing is experimenting and trying new techniques and drawing styles and subjects. And if you are a beginner, you find that you're struggling with one type of sketching or one type of drawing, then try something else. If you find that watercolour is not for you, then try marker pens. If you find that marker pens are not for you, then try watercolour. There's no right or wrong way to do it, it's just everyone finds their own style and everyone finds the thing that clicks for them eventually. I do like the way that this is looking with all the little dots and marks everywhere it's added quite a lot of drama and texture.
just adding a few more outlines at the bottom right corner that I'd missed. And you will always notice that you can be staring at something for so long and you don't realise that you've missed something. And that's just a small detail, but it adds a little more three-dimensionality to those little bits. And this sort of thing is perfect for me because I always get carried away drawing things, little details. It would usually be bricks on a building or tiles on a rooftop, but in this case it's squiggles and scratches. Right, so I forced myself to stop squiggling and now I can go back to the paint. As I said, this is a waterproof ink that I'd drawn with so I can go back on with the watercolour and it's not going to bleed when you paint over the top of it. I used an indigo to paint the shadows. I like indigo for shadows because it's a really dark navy, so it's not pure black and it's a little more visually interesting than a grey. But you could use a dark grey like a Payne's grey as you prefer. I did actually consider using brush marker pens to do the shadows because I do often do that but I was quite enjoying just using the watercolour so I just kept going with that. I'm just going around painting anywhere that I can see has a shadow on it and this is really all about adding contrast. I think when beginners start painting and sketching and you feel that your sketches are a little bit flat probably what is missing is contrast so don't be afraid to add lots of punchy shadows it's usually the thing that makes the biggest difference to improving your sketches the padlock there's a really dark section so I used quite a heavy pigment for that one very little water mostly just the paint straight onto the brush and then up the side of the plate that runs along the middle of the door there's a big shadow there on the right hand side and I can see from the, the way the light is coming that all the shadows are to the right of the objects so that's a good guidance to follow, just look on the right or underneath any object and see is there any shadow. So just continuing painting on. Now this is not wet and wet, this is wet on dry so you're not going to get any of the bleeding effects that we got earlier. This is more like just drawing with the pen. There's not a huge amount of water on the brush and I'm just painting in shadows in no particular order. I think it does help make everything feel a bit more 3D and I don't think I caught all of the places that have shadows. It was just enough to give 
the impression that there's some light coming down on the scene. This is messy and it's not meant to be world-class watercolour painting. This is urban sketching. It's meant to be fun and it's really more about your own interpretation of a scene or a subject rather than trying to make something to impress someone or something that's going to hang on a gallery wall. Now I'm back to the oxide red again and this part I wasn't overly happy with. I put it on quite thick and dark because I want the padlock to stand out a bit more. I wanted to bring it forward by making it darker but it wasn't quite how I wanted it to be so once it was dry I actually went over it again with another paint to give it more of a gold effect because that wasn't really the true colour. switch to a narrower brush so that I could do more of the little details. This is actually the paintbrush that just came with the paint set that I have so I haven't spent any money on paintbrushes at all. The little flat brush that I was using came from a Total Beginners art set and it's still going strong, hasn't given up the ghost yet and so when you're beginning you don't need a lot of expensive equipment. Any old cheap paintbrush will do the trick or the often you'll get a paintbrush free with a paint set like I did. So just use that. And I'm just flicking it around. I'm not using any water at all really. There's some a little bit of moisture on the brush. So I'm just picking up paint and dabbing it around. It's just to give more textural detail again. Add some other layer of texture on top of the ink squiggles that I did. Some paint squiggles also helps to add to that feeling of rough scratchy wood. And if you're having a go at this, you may have a sketch that looks absolutely nothing like mine. It may look a lot better, or you may have made lots of mistakes, but don't worry about the mistakes. This can be the first part of an exciting journey in sketching.
Now I had a bit of a, an idea because I have a metallic gold paint in my paint set and I thought maybe I should give that a go. I've never used this before, this gold paint. And I th think it's meant to be used on black paper so that it stands out. But I decided because I was already painting over a dark, I thought I'm going to give this gold paint a go and see what happens. And I actually quite liked it. It's got a nice shimmery shine to it even when it's dry. And it's always nice to add a bit of bling to a painting. If you do have a go at this do let me know how you get on in the comments section below and there you go when it's all dry you can see it added a, a bit of a shiny embellishment to finish off the sketch and for more urban sketching inspiration like this you can click on this video right here and i will see you in the next one